Well, it's great to chat to Samoa National Men's Coach Jess Ibrom ahead of the FIFA World Cup 2026 Oceania Qualifiers Group B uh, matches in Vanuatu and New Zealand. And first of all, Jess, uh, I know you you recently come from the Cook Islands to take over the Samoan side and job done, or at least partly, um, you got the job done in Apia uh, in that qualifying tournament. Just quickly reflect on those two matches. Um, you left it late, but you qualified, which was the ultimate goal. Yeah, I mean, I've said it in each post-game um, interview is that there's no easy games in World Cup qualifying international football anymore. You see that throughout the world. There's been upsets in the last month or so. So we knew it was going to be tough. I was under no illusions how tough it was going to be. And certainly we had that added pressure of playing on home soil. Um, but yeah, we got over the line. We're very, very um, uh, thankful for that, uh, as well as all the support that we, you know, we, we got here in Apia from everybody, from the president, the federation, and just the people of Samoa as well. So yeah, it's a big thing. It's a big thing. We're, you know, we're very excited for the next phase. Having had a couple of matches now, and obviously going to Vanuatu, Port Vila, um, you know what they're like over there with their football. It'll be packed. There'll be 5,000. It will sound like sort of 30,000. Now, how do you prepare um, for that match and, and prepare the players who many of them won't have played in those kind of, I wouldn't say hostile, but sort of parochial um, environments? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's true. But I mean, we have had, you know, like the Pacific Games as an example, it's a different level of competition, but you know, a lot of the players that are involved in that particular campaign played Solomon Islands opening game, only lost 1-0. So, you know, and they've had a number of games this year, uh, you know, against Fiji, Tahiti, um, P&G. So, they, they, you know, we'll be match ready, definitely. It's a different arena. It's a different atmosphere. Um, but like I say, pressure's not on us. The pressure's on Vanuatu. They're the home team. Um, the expectation is that they win. Um so for us, we're just going to embrace that challenge. We're really excited and looking forward to it. When you look at your squad, I know it's not named at the moment, but but the bulk of the players were, were pretty young. I mean, Andrew Setefano aside, you know, your, your veteran captain, but uh, but a lot of young players. Um, so taking over the role, I mean, yes, you've got the immediate campaign, but but what's your kind of vision? Is it a is it like a four year thing? Thinking these players, a lot of them are going to be at their best um, come the next World Cup cycle. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we are in that phase at the moment. Um, you have to work cycle to cycle, World Cup to World Cup. So, you know, directly after this phase, you know, then we're already start a preparation towards the next um, World Cup qualifying campaign. Um, and it just has to be a continue, um, you know, a continuum of traction of games, of training camps, of, um, you know, player identification, not just in Samoa, but overseas as well. So, it just has to continue, really, to, to build upon this momentum. You know, we've played a number of games this year and the previous year, and we've got a young squad, like you've mentioned. Um, so for those guys, you know, they'll, they'll have even more experience come the next uh, phase that comes around. So they're really getting exposed to some different environments at the moment, different match days that they wouldn't have done before. Um, but no, yeah, like I say, we've just got to keep the momentum going. There's that old saying, one game at a time. But I imagine when you look at a campaign, you you also start planning for for the other matches as well. Your main focus now is on Vanuatu, but in the back of your mind, I'd imagine a match against the All Whites in New Zealand with you know Nottingham Forest striker Chris Wood in their side and Libby Kakachi, a number of top players. That's got to be in the back of the mind too. And also the fact that there is a huge Samoan community in Auckland to tap into to to get that support um, for the team as well. So um, it's just an exciting campaign, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. I mean, Vanuatu is going to be an incredible experience. Tahiti and Hamilton, um, you know, we want to tap into that Samoan community, as you mentioned, and we will do, I'm sure. Um, and then it culminates with, you know, do your whites um so there's no bigger fixture in this region um you know you're playing against professional players these guys play top level elite football as you mentioned chris wood um i mean the list goes on and on yeah um but what an experience what an experience for our players to showcase themselves against that level of elite talent um we're under no illusions you know there's a massive gulf between new zealand and the rest of the countries in this region and there has been for a number of years um, and they're the best for a reason. So, you know, like I say, for, for us, it's going to be an incredible experience and one we just want to really, you know, showcase ourselves in the right way, compete in the game um, and just give absolutely everything, which I know that the guys will. 
we know that there is that that gap between New Zealand and the rest, but uh, but in terms of the goals for the team, I mean, realistically, uh, um, are you that far away from the likes of a Vanuatu and a Tahiti? Um, are you targeting, you know, getting through the group to to give yourself that shot at, at potentially, you know, let's let's face it, there's a half spot for Oceania as well as the direct entry to the World Cup. Oh, we're going to be doing everything we can to be as best prepared as we can be compete in the games as long as we can to get, you know, hopefully some favourable results that puts us close to that to that um, spot. Um, we know, again, it's going to be a massive challenge, but, um, you know, if anything football has proven in the last month with, you know, the games that were taking place throughout the globe, I mean, I've seen the Socceroos lost at home, San Marino won their first game. International football, anything can happen now. So, um, no, we're looking forward to it. Your 90 minutes, you know, sometimes you need a little bit of luck too on your side. You need a few um, decisions to perhaps go your way. And and uh, and I guess you've got to also, um, you know, I mean, injuries can play a part too, can't they? So you, you want to hopefully keep um, keep your team on the field. Uh, any areas in particular that you're thinking are the major work-ons ahead of this next campaign from September? Uh, no, not really. In, in, in terms of, I mean, we've spoken about things from, a, you know, internally within the environment, um, areas that we can improve upon. Um, it's it's really just that you know it's 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 just going to be an incredible experience for the players to, um, you know go go over to Port Villa. You know I've been there a few times. I was there with the Cook Islands 19s. I know what an environment is like. I know it can be hostile towards the away um, team, um, but I also know there's added pressure on the home team. So you know these are things that you know we we just want to tap into as much as possible to. And put ourselves in best position to compete in the game for as long as we can compete in it. And the exploits, the success of the Samoan under seven, under sixteen uh, women's side, who has been the first Samoan side to ever qualify for a FIFA World Cup. I mean, that must be kind of inspirational for the for the boys as well, for the players um, to know that hey, look, you know, little old Samoa population, two hundred and fifty odd thousand can can get to a World Cup. Um, must be quite motivating. Yeah, definitely. I mean, this I've just got back to Appia at the weekend and it's the talk of Appia, you know, from everybody internally in the Federation, outside the Federation. Um, you know, it's been across the media everywhere. I have to say congratulations to one, the staff and the players um, who were just absolutely outstanding. I watched all the games. I was, you know, messaging one back and forth, the head coach. Um, and it, it's incredible. It really, really is. And, you know, I said in a, a recent interview in terms of, you know, rugby here at the national elite level has been a quite a dominant sport. But um, and the only way you shift that um, is is by going deep in tournaments and qualifying the World Cups. And the girls have done it. So, it, it, you know, it's it's history in itself. Um, and I honestly believe that providing this, you know, the continued commitment by everybody, then, you know, we can look look at other youth youth section teams to you know, to go towards that goal as well was, you know, is why not? But, you know, I know that that's been a lot of work from, you know, everybody connected with the team and the federation as a whole.